So we're going to kick off. I think everyone's excited to be here. Everyone's ready. You don't really know what's in store for you, and that kind of makes you nervous and excited at the, boat at the same time. Somebody did ask me if this is an intense exercise and starvation type of program. So in short, yes. <laughs> but, 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 but no, but no. It's, all of the elements are there. Everything that you've ever thought you should know about weight gain and weight loss, we've tried to include over the course of the 12 weeks. And um, every week there should be at least one aha type moment for you that you just go, now that makes most sense I've ever heard it explained to me before. And it often just takes that one small thing to turn everything around. And for many, many people, we find that's the case. If you look at what you're doing wrong, the mistakes you're making, the reasons you've arrived at the place that you're at now, it very often comes down to one or two really basic little errors or mistakes that you make, but you keep on making them. And it's those one or two things that prevent you from breaking through. So whenever you have tried to do a weight loss program in the past, it's the thing that prevents you from getting over the hump where it actually becomes easy again. So many people have done weight loss programs and you all have this experience of I lose up to so much and then I just can't anymore. I flatten out, I plateau, I have no energy. I hate the diet, I hate the dog. I just want to die. I don't want to live like this, I can't live like this. And um, it's often just tiny, tiny little adjustments that need to be made. So sometimes the problems are situation problems, sometimes the problems are food problems, and sometimes the problem is you. We tend to blame that one last, most of us. We like to think somebody else has caused the problem that we now have. So we blame wheat and we blame processed foods and we blame fat and we blame uh, busyness and inconvenience and, 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 but sometimes the problem is just you. So there's a, there's a degree of self-discipline involved in any diet. If you thought my diet allows you a one week off lunch break at Limnos, then um, it's going to be a tough <coughs> diet for you. What we're going to do today is, I don't have a lot of time for questions today, we've got 45 minutes starting any minute now. <laughs> and um, today is a very basic, this is how we start. I've found that when people read diet books, they don't want to read the 15 <coughs> chapters on why you could be a better person. They like to get to chapter 16 that says, start eating like this. So we start like that too. Start eating like this. So from today or tomorrow, depending on how prepared you are, I find a lot of people like to have that last celebration meal. <laughs> and I want you to go look at your last celebration meal and know that whatever is on that plate or table or room <laughs> is probably part, a big part of the problem. The last meal syndrome is often, uh, it, yes, this is the last in, in many ways. Um, it gives us a lot of clues as to what the problems actually are. So the thing that you know, oh, this thing, I'm for, he's going to tell me to stop this for 12 weeks, so I'm, I'm just going to have as much as I can of it. That thing is the thing we're going to sort out over the next 12 weeks, all right? So it'll be easy for you to identify, and tonight will be horrible, miserable. Some of you might have hangovers tomorrow, uh, headaches from all the caffeine that you've tried to squash in, and... Uh, Really, what, what else? There might be some nausea, that bloated feeling from getting that last piece of milk tart in. But um, you, we are very mean in the beginning. We are mean. We, we kind of just hit it like with a bit of a kickstart to get it going. I find that people like to lose weight fast. And as much as it's not healthy for you to lose weight fast, it, it does kind of get you going and gets you excited. And it makes you feel like this thing could work. So we do it. And you will lose weight fast. So we've had people who lose up to 8 kilograms in the first week. But you know how life always works. It's normally not you, hey? <laughs> so I apologize to all the other people who aren't going to lose 8 kilograms. But we've had that. That was the most we've had by one person in one week. 
And the nice thing about it is, and this is where people often criticize us, oh, but that's too fast, that's not healthy. He, doesn't, he didn't put it back on again in the second week, which is quite critical to the process, because it wouldn't help. I can, I can help you lose 45 kilograms in the next week if you wish. I have to introduce you to tuberculosis, though, <laughs> and a starvation diet, which would work wonderfully and then you'd live for two weeks and die, but really look quite good at the funeral. <laughs> so we don't, we, we, we are careful about going too fast. I had a woman who last week came to me and she, she was in the seventh or eighth week of the program and she came to consult me because the program's just not going well and we get people like that every now and again and it's normally just a matter of time before I go, well, that could be the problem. But in her case, it was sounding pretty good. I said, well, how much have you actually lost? And then she said, only eight. And so I just threw out, you see, only eight in six weeks. I said, well, when last did you only lose eight kilograms? Because it's amazing how once you start this thing, your brain just goes mad. And you just feel like, I want to lose more, and I want to lose faster, and I want to lose it here, and I want to lose it here, and I want to lose... <laughs> and that's really not the idea. The idea is to make this a part of your life's process. The idea of this is to work this into your lifestyle. The idea that this is, 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 this is not a 12 week course which has a beginning, a middle and an end, which means you don't have to do a whole lot of stuff for 12 weeks and then you can just carry on the way you were before. This is an introductory course to the rest of your life. So you are not allowed to celebrate the end of the 12-week course, okay? In the way that you're going to celebrate tonight, the end of your former life. <laughs> so we're going to kick off. So today is a lot of information. It's very basic principles that you're going to start applying for me in this week. Um, I'm not going to have a lot of time for questions. So for today, you're going to have to take my word for it. Just believe it. It's going to be different from other diets. So I don't, I always get a question of, I did the other diet and they said you really mustn't do that. And uh, yes, yes, there are a thousand diets. In America, 1,000 registered diets at any one time, all of them slightly different from each other. So we can't all be right, um, but different things apply to different people. And over the 12 weeks, that's what will become more and more obvious to you. So we're going to all start together in the same way. Remember the elimination I showed you last week? We're going to get some of the rubbish out. It's not as hard as you think. <coughs> Let's see what we can tell you. Um, we're going to introduce you to the four E's. I don't think I told you this in the introductory program. The four E is the diet aspect of the Bet Your Life program. So the Bet Your Life program is a weight loss program. It is a diet program. There is a psychology component and there's an exercise component. It has a 12-week series of lectures which in involve medical, physiology, mental and educational and motivational lectures. That all encompasses Bet Your Life. The 4E is the eating program, and we'll refer to this throughout. And we'll tell you at each point how you're going to bring these E's into your life. So we're going to start with the top of the E tonight, which is tonight. Just <laughs> forgive me. <coughs> this afternoon, which is our elimination phase, we move across to the Enlighten, the energize and later later in your life we move across to equilibrium and what we'll show you later is that ultimately one never ever leaves this balance beam we will all get to areas of equilibrium where we are our ideal weights and we feel happy with the way we look and then it will continue to cycle and then you'll start to gain weight again and then you kind of start the process over and over so what we're going to teach you is tools to kind of pull it back together again. In other words, what do you do that week after Christmas? When you've really lived hard, you've gained a number of kilograms, and you normally know this happens because I find ladies weigh themselves wonderfully when they're losing weight, and the first sign that you're gaining weight is you don't weigh yourself anymore. Exactly. It's amazing. So, as soon as you've stopped weighing yourself, you know it's time to start the process again. And this is the tools, and it's such a simple concept that it's not something that you're going to have to wonder in five years' time, how did it go again? Was it 100 grams of this, and were you allowed to eat this with that? Or it's really simple. So pay attention today. This will already start to change your life. All right, the, uh, we're going to give you a little bit about a background about food. I'm going to just watch the clock now. 
I think we're going to start formally. I kind of want a nice start to the video, so I'm not sure that part needs to be in the video as such. <coughs> So we're going to try and keep the video really short. So welcome to the video, people. Thanks for being here. Join us. See, it's going to be a bit movie-like too. Cool. <laughs> if you want to be paid extras, let me know. We always need someone to pass out, run out of the room screaming, stuff like that. <laughs> Let's, ladies and gentlemen, talk about food. So I want to just introduce you very basically to the food that you're eating, explain to you a little bit of how it works, what it looks like. There is a picture of your food. Um, you can imagine anything in that block. And this is what your food is made up of. And these are things you know. Your food is basically made up of these components. Car carbohydrates, proteins, fats, fibers, vitamins, minerals, enzymes, enzymes, and a whole new group we're going to teach you about called phytochemicals. The chemicals are what giving it taste, giving it quality, making it healthy or unhealthy. So we kind of know about these things. Most of us will be able to say these words, but few of us actually know what they do in our body. We don't know how much of these different things are in the different foods that we eat. And I'd like to bring that to your attention over the next 12 weeks. You can actually start to understand how your food is made, what's in it, and does it make a difference? Does drinking 2% milk, uh, uh, is drinking 2% milk really that much better than drinking full cream milk or skim milk? And I'm gonna help you to understand why Maybe not. Maybe it makes no difference at all. Maybe we've been duped into thinking this is a huge thing, but maybe it's not. We're going to try and teach you why there's a difference between eating pork and chicken and lamb and beef. And why maybe eating red meat is not the worst thing in the world for you. Even though everybody up until now has told you, you know, cows will obviously kill you. I know they will if they stand on you, but generally we found that the beef that we're eating these days is not as dangerous as we've previously thought. And the joke of it is that the meats we've yeah. come to think of as safe, mm -hmm. like chicken, we talked a bit about it last week, I think, mm -hmm. we're eating so much of it that it now is starting to become a problem. So we'll try and talk about that. So I want you to understand what's in your food. I'm going to get you interested in actually reading the label on the box that you were almost going to buy before you put it back and thought, no, this is not for me. That's what you're going to do, see, from now on. Then you're going to go to that place where they sell fresh, 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 fresh stuff, stuff whole things. <laughs> and if you're lucky, there's like a picture, a board that just says, this is a squash. <laughs> and, then, and then you can Google what you do with that, you see. So, so we have this little game at home where sometimes I go to fruit and veg and I pick some weird looking vegetable off the shelf. And I bring it home and I give it to my wife and say, love, here's another wonderful vegetable that we can watch rot in the cupboard until somebody figures out what to do with it. <laughs> but it's just nice to see it then. It looks healthy and sometimes we even put it in the fruit bowl just to scare other people and children. <laughs> but we want, you, we want to introduce you to whole real foods. We want to introduce you to fresh stuff, stuff that hasn't been processed. More about that just now. So this is your food. And we're going to teach you all about those different aspects of your food. Something happens to the food that we eat because there's a little problem. And uh, I, I had this problem this morning. On, on the way to work this morning, and a funny thing happened is uh, I bumped into about 7 billion other people that I had to share the planet with. And I realized, no, that's why the carrots aren't growing so well in the backyard anymore. Uh, and the, I, I can't keep ca cattle anymore like, you know, I did before, like we all obviously did before. And uh, I can't milk anything. I can't grow anything. I can't, uh, nothing. I'm completely reliant on somebody else to provide me with my food. And it comes in all sorts of containers. And I've got to just trust that what's in that container is healthy and good for me. And I kind of hope that somebody at Pick and Pay checks through every box that gets put on the shelf and goes, this is good for human beings. Put it out there. But you'll be surprised to know how little people actually care about that. And um, if something makes money, then that's good enough to sell. And we're going to try and tell you what, what you must support and what you mustn't. Anyway, here we go. Something does happen to this food because it has to feed 7 billion people who can't get to farms anymore. So we start to process food. We package it. We store it for inordinate periods of time. It's preserved for sometimes a year in cold storage. Uh, it's processed in a variety of ways. We talk about extrusion of food. For example, the OTs you might feed your children. Ask your child, what is in this food? Where do you think the OTs trees are? They don't know. They, and you don't know either. Then they say, I don't know, Ma, what is in there? Then you go, I don't know. 
oh, oh, oaty things. Okay, so we don't know what's in the food that we eat. The food is refined so that it tastes nice and cooks fast. The food is flavored. Do you know that Kentucky Fried Chicken adds a flavor to the chicken called chicken? <laughs> you would think that would sort of be like just implied, you know, in, in the name somewhere. But in fact, if you like, you could go to Kentucky and say, hi, I'd like your Kentucky Fried Pork, please. And they can just put a different kind of sprinkle on pretty much any meat that you present them with. So, um, yes, 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 that's an interesting thing. Sweetening of everything. So now we've been duped into thinking that because it's sweet and it's healthy because it's sugar free. Maybe not. Maybe the sweetened stuff is doing us more damage than good. Maybe it's better just to have the sugar. Stuff is, pesticides are not only sprayed onto food, but pesticides are now genetically engineered into foods. So now, the farmer doesn't have to fly over his crops with an aeroplane anymore. He has to just flick the seed in the ground, which he had to buy at a special place. He may not grow seeds from last year's crop. He has to buy seeds from a bulk wholesaler, which has these genetically engineered seeds, which have pesticides in the genetics of the plant, so that when it grows, the insects will eat it and die. And we eat those pesticides as well. Is that working out well for us? I don't know. So far, I, I must say, I haven't noticed any pests on me, so <laughs> I, it's working pretty well. I haven't had lice for years. <laughs> anyway, all right, so our food is really, really, really jumbled up. It's sold in boxes and packets. It's frozen. It's just, it's unrecognizable. We do not know where half the food that we eat actually comes from. We don't know which country it's come from. We don't know how long it's been stored. We don't know what processes it's been through to get to what it looks like. I can tell you for a fact there is no such thing as a chocolate per neutro tree. So a, a lot of people are surprised by that. So chocolate is not a natural part of breakfast. Well, um, as confusing as that may be, considering what you had for breakfast this morning, um, there is no naturally occurring chocolate out there to just be eaten. So we're going to talk about that too. Okay, so now we've got all these processes. Then we start to change food because we obviously, we, we fussy eaters. We, we choose food with our eyes and we choose it with the tip of our tongue. So um, my children are even better than me. They can just choose it with their eyes. So they instinctively just know uh, that's not going to be good for me because... It's like broccoli, and I don't have to taste that to know that doesn't taste good. So even better than we are, we still go, oh, oh, oh. you know, when you eat at your mother-in-law's and she just never quite got the little cucumber thing right, and it's just always, oh, oh. Anyway, so what they do is they add fat to make it more uh, tasty. We, uh, what do we do? Uh, let's get my arrows right. So we add a little bit of fat. We get rid of chemicals that change the taste of food. Chemicals are bitter, and uh, they really, we thought, made no difference to the health or quality of the food, so we chuck them out. We damage tons of vitamins and minerals in the processing of food, in the heating, reheating, freezing, uh, so we lose tons of it. Don't worry, we add some back again. So whenever you see a box that says added vitamins, what it should say is a block like this big that says, oh, we destroyed a few vitamins, 80%, and then we put a few back just so that we'd sound really cool. Then we'd get rid of fiber because fiber is very chewy. Fiber is the stuff that gets stuck in your teeth, so not cool. So fiber is the difference between two-minute noodles and like real noodles. Fiber is the difference between green fruit and ripe fruit. Fiber is the difference between oats so easy and oats so not so easy. So <laughs> carbohydrates are bread and we're going to talk about that, tons of carbohydrates. There's just nothing that doesn't have carbohydrates. Everything that you eat after 8 o'clock at night in your house, you can be sure, is full of carbohydrates. You don't have to make up that list now, but you know what's in it. Then we chuck a bit of protein in because we just really weren't sure what to do with it. And uh, we, process the, we process it a lot. And then we end up with something that I've just called new food. And that's what we eat today in the world in 2013. We primarily eat food that just has no origin, no base, and we eat it purely because we like the taste of it. We pay less and less attention to the quality of it. We eat till we feel full, and then we think if we're full, we're getting what we need. Right, so this is what our food does. We have blue Rice Krispies, chocolate, uh, wheat picks, bites. We have those very healthy little snacks. 
blue there, those horrible things, this awful, disgusting, obviously criminal type, Pete, these, yes, no, no, I've had requests, I'm not re-showing this slide. So, <laughs> this is the world we now live in, and you know what, you know what, we love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> so the truth is, if I could run a diet program that had those foods in it, we'd have to be in the big auditorium or in the street or something. There'd be a carnival. Stadium. <laughs> the, sta <laughs> the stadium. <laughs> so this is the food. So um, what we want to do tonight is just break down. Oh. Yes, but tonight as well. Um, you guys aren't going to be there though. But uh, what we're going to do this afternoon is just break down one or two of the groups and we're going to just make our first few basic rules. So here we go. We're going to talk first about carbohydrates and I'm going to teach you about just five carbohydrates that are, are now going to be on your most wanted hit list. Not because you want to eat them, but because from now on we're going to ask you to start reducing or even avoiding these five carbohydrates. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. This is where it gets ugly. <sighs> okay, we're going to start with potatoes. Rice, oats, wheat, and other grains, millies. I know. Wait, first you go, but what other ones are there? So let me help you. None. That's them. Okay, we generally talk about the white foods. So uh, th this is a fairly common thing. I think Oprah actually made that famous about avoiding white foods. Um, these are your white foods. And the problem with these foods is not the foods themselves. The problem is how frequently we eat them and in what quantities we eat them. So that what was formerly safe and wonderful and tasty has been changed, has been modified, has been processed, and is, in, as in, uh, is consumed in excess. You will quite easily spend one day having this food for breakfast, wheat picks, oats, lunch, sandwiches, pies, biscuits, and supper, pizza, pasta. You will have carbohydrates, breakfast, lunch, and supper. And I'm not talking about, remember last Thursday, I'm talking about every single day of your life. This is what you're eating, three, four meals a day. All your snacks are carbohydrate loaded. All your biscuits, all your chocolates, all your cakes, carbohydrate, highly refined sugars, things that get absorbed into your system almost instantly, they add energy to your system, but burn very little themselves in trying to digest it, and they just need to be stored. They're a very, very cheap form of energy. So they fill a hole, but they offer us very little. Not because they were bad in their own right, but because they've been modified to the extent that they aren't as healthy as they should have been. We know that the grains, oops, gave that one away. The grains, uh, contain something called cellulose, which is a type of fiber which you can't digest. So that's why we've beat these things and refine them and make them into flowers and powders. But we lose a lot of the good qualities of these foods to do that. These plants are engineered to be heavy. Um, the wheat that they actually grow in America has a shorter stalk than wheat. It's genetically engineered, completely modified. Short stalk, big ears, so you get maximum yield for your surface area that you're planting it. It's a completely different plant to what your grandmother used to eat. When they went and bought bread, it was different from the bread that we buy. You know that because the bread we buy stays fresh for a week. <laughs> and the bread they bought was not so fresh by the time they got it home. You know those? You used to dip it in soup. They didn't buy rusks, they ate yesterday's brown bread. We, you try, your bread will, it, it's amazing how long it stays fresh, it's wrong. <laughs> anyway, so those are the carbohydrates. You've got a picture of these five carbohydrates in your mind. Potatoes, rice, oats, whole grains, millies. Next, big group we're going to introduce to you is the fats and the proteins. So here we've got fish. Here we've got something that's coming from an animal, butter. These are the guys that made that butter. Some sheep, some, they worried that's where they're going to end up. Cheese, chickens, so pretty much your animals. And if we're not sure, then we just have this 
little saying. If we wonder if it's a protein, if it came from something that had a face, it is a fat or a protein. <laughs> so the deal is this. When we grow stuff, it's carbohydrate. When it moves or moves or has a face, it's protein or it's fat. In fact, you can't, in, in the animal world, you don't get protein without fat and you don't get fat without protein. They always are together. So we will often just refer to carbohydrates and fats and skip the protein out of it, although uh, I tend to say proteins and carbohydrates most of the time. But when I say fats or proteins, it's implied they go together. So these are your proteins. Now, um, let's see where we're at. So what is Bet Your Life all about? Firstly, this is important, and I've kind of covered this already, is that we recognize that every single person in this building eats differently, wants different things, likes different things, gains weight differently. And when I say gains weight differently, it doesn't mean that, um, no, it does mean that. Some people will get fat around the bum, some people around the face, some people around the mid-body regions. I'm not sure who's going to watch the video. <laughs> so just keeping it all very sort of parental guidance. Uh, we all gain weight in different places in different ways. We all lose it in different ways in different places. And some of us eat different foods to have that process work. And that's why there are so many diet programs around. Is because there's always going to be somebody that responds to any kind of diet program that exists because there's just that amount of diversity. So the trick is to try to find something that works for everybody. But we're going to show you over the next 12 weeks how your diet changes. And I told you at the introductory meeting as well. Week for week, your diet's going to start changing slightly. What you need more of, somebody else might need none of. And we're going to start to individualize this diet. So very, very important that we recognize individuality. Okay. We do not believe that we are fat because we eat fat. So this is very important. We are not an anti-fat diet. We are not a fat free diet. We don't ask you necessarily to cut the fat off your meat. We're taking a chance. We hope it works. So <laughs> we're going to show you over the next few weeks why we believe this to be true and why we think the world has grown and grown and grown in its obesity levels and the one fight that we have fought the most consistently over the last 30 or 40 years is reducing fat. So everything on the shelves is fat-free, low-fat, and we think that's cool, but obviously it's not working. We're fatter than we have ever, ever, ever been. The world actually has to stop spinning for 20 minutes a day just to take a break, because <laughs> we've just gotten so heavy. So not a lot of people know that. <clears throat> All right, we believe you are fat for this reason, to this day. Unfortunately, this is true. We are fat because we eat too much. We are fat because we eat too many refined carbs, and that's what I was talking about earlier. We want white stuff. We want stuff that chews easily, cooks easily, and tastes yummy. And you know those things because when you've had a plateful of them, you want to go back for another plateful of them because they don't fill you. Do, are you not ever amazed at how much pizza you can eat? It's, and, you know, if you have a bowl of rice as a meal, you really don't feel like you've had supper yet. Or if you have a husband, that will be his comment exactly, is when... Are we actually going to eat, you know, because that rice was nice, but why? Uh, and then we consume too few nutrients is your other problem. So we consume a nutrient deficient diet. We believe that your body is not hungry for food. Your body is hungry for nutrients. Nutrients are the things that grow you, heal you, protect you, prevent disease, prevent autoimmune disorders that keep you healthy and will help you to grow old healthily, energetically, and well. You will continue to eat until your body is satisfied that it has received enough nutrients in its 24-hour day, which for most of us, because we're eating this highly processed foods, is really, really a difficult thing to do. So we have discovered, or we know for a fact, that in the world today, we have two types of malnutrition. You have the obvious African story of there's just no food to eat, and you have the Pineland story of there's just always food to eat. <laughs> and we just eat it and eat it. And sometimes the number one reason for eating the food is because it was there. That was it. We saw it. 
we liked it, we consumed it. <laughs> so, that's what we're going to attack over the next few weeks. So how do we start? So here's the really easy thing. I've got 15 minutes to tell you. All right, we're going to do this as soon as... As soon as... Okay, we're going to start by separating our meals into carbohydrate meals or protein and fat meals. So we're going to divide these two big groups down the middle and we're going to say from now on we're going to refer to a carbohydrate meal or a protein meal. So what's going to be the difference between the two? The one group will look like this. Now remember, I, I kind of made a big deal about those carbs and how bad they are for you and how little we like them. But we're still not quite convinced that removing them from your diet altogether is the best way to go. So I'm not um, all the way over on, on that side of the diet spectrum. And there, but there are many, and this is a very growing um, sort of area of diet and weight loss. There's a lot of evidence that removing all your carbohydrates works wonderfully to lose weight. But there's very little evidence to show that removing all your carbohydrates enables you to sustain that weight loss. So when we look at the different types of diets over one year, two years, three years, we find that it doesn't actually matter how you started, they all kind of end up being more or less the same. So whether you went on to low fat, high protein, high fat, low fat, carb free, fat free, vegetarian, vegan, they all sort of converge at a place ultimately where they kind of work out the same and it comes down to at the end of the day self-control and change in thinking. So ultimately we, it still looks like the people that manage to overcome the need to eat continuously are the winners in this competition. But what we do know is there are certain things that make this journey easier and there are certain that make it harder. So we're trying to make the change process as easy as possible. And that's why we're going to separate these meals. And that's why we do encourage you to eat fewer carbs, initially at least. So here's a carb meal. Your carb meals will be those things we talked about. Wheat, rice, pasta, potato, or corn. Vegetables are in, salads are in. The difference between vegetables and salads, salads are generally fresh, cold, and out of a fridge. Vegetables are generally roots or stems of plants and generally need to be cooked to be eaten. Okay, so that will be sort of a hot, a warm portion, and that will be a cold thing. Right, the other meal will look like this. A fat or a protein meal will consist of something like an egg or a meat or a fish with vegetables and salads. So the simple difference between the two is the carb meal has no proteins and the protein meal has no carbs. So if you understand this one slide, you basically don't have to come back to another lecture. Because you'll be amazed how much this tiny, tiny difference makes to your hunger, your appetite, and your body's ability to lose weight. Right, then, here's some examples of what we're talking about. This is an example of a protein meal. So this is a stew of some sort, nice big plate full of vegetables, and what you'll notice is that about a third of the plate is your protein portion, and the other third is, uh, sorry, two thirds are either the salads or the vegetables, in this case, vegetables. So broccoli, uh, butternutty kind of thing, probably, and peas. Now, some people worry that peas are carbohydrates, because people know so much stuff. <laughs> so it's always hard for me, whenever I talk, then someone goes, but peas are carbohydrates, and carrots are carbohydrates. And some of you are going like, really, are they? And then other people say, yeah, I knew that. It always confused me a bit. <laughs> what actually gets really confusing is when I tell you that pumpkin is not a vegetable, but a fruit. So is cucumber. Did you know that? No, now it's getting weird, so we'll just go back to the slides. So, Peas are carbohydrates, but I'm going to show you next week why that doesn't matter to me or to you. I'm looking for the green stuff, okay? That's the part that makes them very, very different. Let's get another example. A protein meal again. Burivors. This particular example is ostrich burivors, and which is a great meat. It is low fat, but is that important? Maybe not. But for the beginning, we... If it tastes nice, then it's good. I'm, I'm not going to say load up the fat either. Okay. 
a little bit of salad now, and uh, we can see just a little variety of things. That might even be a strawberry there, a bit of cheese. Now, cheese goes with your burevors because they're both proteins. Both came from something that had a face. So cheese, nice, goes with my buris. What else we got? Here is an example of a breakfast. I don't know, isn't that weird? There's like green stuff. And that's a little fish, yes. A little bit of salmon, a little bit of trout. Mackerel is a wonderful fish, very high in its omega-3 levels. Um, you, you are allowed to have vegetables for breakfast. You don't have to have breakfast vegetables for breakfast, but you are allowed. So, South Africa is one of the countries that doesn't do that. And it's kind of really weird for, for us. We like our breakfast to come out of, out of a box in the old-fashioned way. But if you go to the Mediterranean, they have fruit and vegetables as a standard with their breakfast. They have fish with every breakfast. We, we have fish once a week, every two weeks, and then the fish we have is hake, which is really, as fish go, not such a great fish. Um, it, it's not a very unhealthy fish. Not a lot of people know that hake actually just jumps onto the boat and says, take me now, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't very nice anyway. It's just swimming there and it's swimming back. So, so um, we don't want fish that just give themselves up. <laughs> Here we go, here's an example of a protein. This is a nice example of a lunch, little beef chunks with shoots, bamboo shoots. We like things that are growing into other things because it contains a lot of energy in tiny little packages. So that's a nice salad and a good example of a lunch. Uh, here is an example of a carb meal. So it'll be a stir fry with veggies and some rice. And you'll notice the rice has got yucky bits in it. So we like brown or wild rice. And the reason for that is the extra fiber that's in it. Some of you are really going to miss the fiber over the next week. Then you must talk to us next week, please, because we have products which will help you increase your fiber again if you need to. Uh, let's see what we got there. Here's a nice example of a breakfast or a lunch or a supper. Egg, a little bit of bacon in the background, some tomato, and then celery sticks or something. Even a bit of mushrooms there. Mushrooms are not in your first week though, but we don't mind or hate mushrooms. There's another example of a whatever, breakfast, lunch. Right, so those are what we're going to do. Let's run through some general principles. Time is ticking. We don't skip meals. We, you will feel that you don't need to eat all the time when you start having protein meals. You'll be amazed how satisfied you feel and how long you feel satisfied when you don't have the carbohydrate. It's, it's the first shock that comes with changing slightly is that we might all be used to having egg, bacon and toast in the morning and we think that the, the length of time that meal is going to keep us satisfied has to do with the volume of food on the plate. But remember your body is nutrient seeking, not volume seeking. We eat volume because we are used to eating volume, not because it necessarily represents what we need. When we take the sugar or the carbohydrate off the plate, your body's reaction to that plate full of food is completely different. And um, you will feel that for, your, for yourselves this week. So we don't skip meals. We only eat three times a day. Yes, please put your hands down. I know there's those diets that you eat six times a day. And what about your metabolism? Well, when you're eating the right food, the energy comes. Your body doesn't waste all its time digesting food. And what else is it doesn't spend its whole night digesting food. So you start to sleep better. Nothing will improve your metabolism more than eating properly, sleeping properly, and then later on a bit of exercise just to get your body moving. That's what metabolism is increased by. What else? We don't eat late, preferably not after seven in the evening. And if you're really dying, you can have a fruit, but not in your first week. Fruits after seven, that's the food you can eat. You can drink water, much as you like. And we do want you to drink lots of water. There is nothing in your, there is no diet that works well if you don't increase your water. Does your wee have to be clear? No. And you don't have to check it all the time. I, I understand. <laughs> you know, for a guy, it's kind of like you have this ongoing visual assessment of the quality of your urine. That's quite a good one. Quite a nice stream, nice stream. Good, still doing well. But um, the ladies is a bit more of a tricky thing to check in there. Like, I don't know. So it has to be a lemon tinge is nice. Okay? If you can't see the bottom of the bowl, you haven't had enough water. 
if the toilet paper looks like it's actually shriveling up, you haven't had enough water. So we want water. It doesn't have to be clear. If you drink too much water, you will notice that you stay thirsty and you keep urinating clear urine. So we don't want you to, pu to push you to that point. So as a rough guide, 3% of your body weight per day. That means for a 100 kilogram man, it's about three liters of water. And you can kind of work it out from there. Water, that's not cold drinks, not coffee, not Coke, water. The only thing you can count as water is rooibos tea. That's good for some and not so good for others. It's like, we'll just stick to the water. I'm kind of on the side of I'll just stick to water. But rooibos tea doesn't stay in your body. It has no effect on your kidneys. It doesn't have a diuretic effect, which means you lose water or retain water. It acts like water. All your herbal teas have that, not green tea. Green tea has one unfortunate problem, is it's caffeinated. And uh, if you can get a decaffeinated green tea, then it's fine. But uh, generally, you, in South Africa, you, you will struggle to do that. So you can have herbal teas like rooibos, uh, or water, will count as water. 3% of your body weight. We don't want you to start a heavy exercise program, and I'm going to tell you later on why. How much do you eat then? Because I haven't told you how much your food must weigh and how the plate must look. So I kind of gave you a rough idea there. You're going to divide your plate into thirds. One third is going to be either the protein or the carbohydrate. The other two thirds is going to be your vegetables or nothingness. So we have this problem in South Africa too. We don't like to see the white under our plate. It makes us nervous. <laughs> so our children are scared that something's under the bed and we are scared that something will come up off the empty part of the plate. So, so far, nobody has died from this program. So we're quite sure that, that you're safe to have empty spaces on your plate. But you may never have more than one third of the plate. Don't go and buy bigger plates. Okay? <laughs> We've seen that trick. It's really old. In fact, the one favor you could do yourself is eat off a smaller plate. One third of the plate. You, are, you make most of your eating decisions visually. So you will fill whatever container you eat. You know this because when you have coffee, where you fill it to this much below the rim, irrespective of the size of the cup. So how did you know you felt like that much tea? I, the cup was that size. You don't. When people ask for a half a cup of tea, that's like such a hard thing, eh? Because you always kind of overfill it a bit because you think they didn't really mean half. They meant like three quarters. Do you also have that? How do you know we are? Oh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to give half a cup. So we want you to eat enough so that you're satisfied. Now, here's an interesting thing that I read this week. If you eat till you're satisfied, which most of us have no idea of, we mostly eat until we're full. By the time you can feel that you've eaten, you've probably already eaten about 1,000 calories more than you needed. By the time you feel stuffed, like I'm not eating again until supper time, <laughs> <laughs> or, or tomorrow supper time, let's hope, then you have eaten two to three thousand calories more than when you were full. So in other words, you have eaten probably in that one meal the equivalent of uh, five to ten thousand calories enough for a day or two. So that's the difference between eating enough eating till you're full, and eating till you're stuffed. So we want to eat until you've had enough. How do you know if you've had enough? It lasts you for five hours. That's how you know you've had enough. I'm not hungry until it's time for my next meal. That's your criteria. So you might make a mistake in the first few days. You can correct it the next. So I have some patients that say, listen, protein meals, be careful. Okay, we're going to eat eggs. How many? Oh, five eggs. <laughs> really? So how did the two eggs work out for you? Oh, I couldn't. I was too scared. There was all that open space on the plate. So, try just two eggs. You'll be amazed. Right, what else? Let's quickly start eliminating. Are you ready? This is the rundown. A few minutes. What are we going to get rid of? We're going to get rid of foods that cause cravings. We're going to get rid of foods that cause ill health, bad habits, addictions, fattening foods. We're going to get rid of stimulants, processed foods, sugary foods, toxic foods, toxic foods, alcohol and caffeine, poison, stuff that's killing you. Yeah, like alcohol and caffeine that you have every day, all day. We're going to try and look for foods that make you sick. Okay, how do we do this? How long is this phase? First of all, this phase is seven days. It doesn't have to start tonight. Some of you will just need two or three days to get over tonight. But <laughs> what I like to do is this. I like it to do a phase one elimination for seven days. That means from the day I start till the day I finish, I've had a good seven days in a row. I went, I went once to a, a shop that said, 
open 24 hours and I got to the door and it was closed which is weird. And then I went the next day and I said, look, you were closed and your science is 24 hours. And the oak said, yeah, but not in a row. So <laughs> this is how your seven day thing works. Seven days in a row. Then you have done the elimination phase. But you've got two to three weeks to do it. So if you feel like you need to take a week just to sort of wind down, get rid of some of the things that you're really going to miss, have a last glass of wine and supper, you can do that for this week and kind of build up to it. The guys that do the best in the program, just go for it, okay? Make a choice, make a decision and do it. If you're not ready for that, and that's fine, we're all different, then wait. Wean yourself off some of the bad stuff and start to get your mind ready to go for it. Pick a day that you're going to start and do it for seven clear days. When you've done seven clear days, we'll move to the next phase, which we'll talk about next week. Right, seven good days. How much do you eat? We talked about that. It's not an eating competition, so I didn't tell you how much to eat. I'm giving you general guidelines because I don't believe men weigh, weigh foods. We don't care. Your stomach is not a bank. It's not going to store it for you later for the seven dry years. So we're trying to make five hours. That's our goal. That's all you've got to make, five hours. If you made a mistake today, that's fine. Have your little nibble or snack. Fix it tomorrow by having a little bit more, but try and move away from the snacks and the nibbles in between. Um, just because you're bigger doesn't mean you need more. A, a horrible misconception, but I'm a really big guy. Or Remember, the fat that's hanging around your body doesn't need food. It's not hungry. It didn't ask for anything. You just keep feeding it. The little thin person inside of you is the hungry one. So that's who we're trying to feed. These are how your meals can look. You can have a meal uh, in a day that can be a protein breakfast, a carb for lunch, and a protein for supper. Or you can have three carbs. Not a good one, but you can. Or you can have three proteins. So you can have this whole week with no carbs whatsoever. You don't have to have vegetables with every meal, but I'm going to encourage you to have something vegetable -y with every meal. Okay. Here are some snacks you can have. Meat, biltong, hard-boiled eggs, celery sticks, carrots, natural live yogurts, tin of tuna. You shouldn't be hungry. So if you're hungry, have something to eat. The worst thing you can do on a diet is be hungry. What are you not allowed in this week? This is the important list here. No alcohol. No caffeine. Green tea's off for a while. No milk. No soft drinks. No sweetened drinks, even diet drinks. Nothing with sweeteners in it. A, a, a water that has been sweetened has a different name. It's called cold drink without color. So nothing that's flavored, nothing that's altered. The grains that you're gonna cut out for me for this week, wheat, corn, barley, white rice, and oats. The dairy products, pretty much all of them. Actually, it's funny, drinks, might have to change that. Cheese, milk, flavored yogurt, out. Live natural yogurts, fine. Bulgarian yogurt, Ayrshire yogurt. Vegetables that we don't want you to have. Mushrooms, potatoes, sweet potatoes. They're just really carb-rich foods. We'll bring them back. We love those foods, but they're very, very high carb. So preferably, we're going to count them as carbs rather than vegetables. Refined foods, no sugar, no cakes, no biscuits, no sweets, no chocolates, no chips. Chips could be vegetables, they're made of potatoes, but they don't count. Here's an important list too, no fruit, no fruit, no vinegar, no pickled foods, no processed foods. It's a long list, hey? It feels like, sure. No beans, no nuts, no avos. This week, for this phase, uh, foods that you are allowed, that's, that's the whole thing, right, pretty much. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Don't go. There's a lot that you can eat. Just, just in case you're starting to lose all hope, this is what's left after we've taken all that stuff away. All the types of meat, but unprocessed. All the poultry. Lots of seafood. Do you know what this might need you to do, though? It's going to need you to go and Eat stuff that you normally have on that list of every now and again, or sometimes, or if you see it in a shop, or somebody serves it up to you. It, be creative. 
There are vegetable proteins, tofu, corn, quinoa. Has anybody in this room even eaten those things? No, we don't even, we don't even know about them. We, they're there. We've heard about them. Tonight, for some of us, the first time. Like tuna, and, uh, um, tuna, yes, and brine. And That's fine. Tuna is fine. Where is that? Uh, tuna, we're good. Tuna is good. Tuna in, 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 in brine is fine. Tuna in salt, what I think you get in salt. Fine, fine, fine. Um, mussels in oil, no. Which I think is how you get mussels. It's just too oil rich. But later on, fine. It's not a bad oil. It's just too much oil. Vegetables, there's a list of vegetables. <clears throat> it's pretty much everything that's alphabetized. But really, vegetables, except for those others we've said. So any vegetable. It's not an exhaustive list. I'm sure you'll find more if you Google it. Salads are the usual things, cold things that you can mix together. You can have tomatoes in there. You can't have cheese in your salad. Please, you can't have croutons in your salad. Preferably, don't even sprinkle olive oil over your salad, but if you really hate it dry, do a little. <clears throat> olive oil is oil. Oil is fat. Fat is energy. Although it is a good fat, it is still energy. When you put it into your food, it provides your body with energy. And we're trying to cut out as many ways of unnecessary energy as we can. So that's the idea. So I'm not talking about health and good health and bad health. I'm talking about weight loss for the beginning. A lot of these things will start coming back over the next weeks. Pickled, you get a preserved sort of a beetroot, not so cool. If you want to buy a raw one and cook it, very cool. People grate beetroot as well. Very nice. Excellent for your stomach as well. For some people will struggle with constipation. We have products for constipation. Lots of them. Boxes full. Those of you that struggle, please come and tell us. It's, some people really can have a rough time. Um, eggs. <coughs> Any kinds of eggs. Dairy. The yogurt is allowed. Grains. Brown rice. Fruit. We do let olives slip in there. Although olives are often preserved or pickled or salted or something. But don't, you know, don't eat handfuls of them. If you want to just flavor your salad a little bit, olives are okay. Olives are an excellent food. Drinks. The drinks, this is the expansive, exhaustive list of drinks that you're allowed to have over the next few weeks. You will never tire of this list. And as you get tired of the one, you just move to the next one. So you start with tap water. <laughs> when you're sick of tap water, go for bottled water. Up we don't mind if it's still water or sparkling water. We have found out that the bubbles have no fat in them. <laughs> Decaffeinated teas. Rooibos tea. That would be the main tea that I'd like you to drink. There's a lot of antioxidants in rooibos tea. It's a healthy tea. Decaffeinated coffee is if you're really dying for a taste of coffee and I've said you can't have caffeine. It's still not the best drink and I'd still rather you didn't drink it before bedtime. But if you need a cup of coffee, you can have a cup of decaf. The, the decaf filtered coffees are not bad. Can you have a question? Your Here's the next bit of bad news. <laughs> <laughs> you can put a sweetener with your tea if you have to. But the less junk you put into your body, the better. Sweeteners have been shown to increase appetite. So whenever you take your sugar out of your whatever, you catch it up somewhere else. You end with it, and you know you can test this. Put a candorel in your mouth, leave it there for five minutes, and watch what you do. It will be, you'll be raiding something very quickly. It leaves you with a taste. You want something to take the taste away. Your body has suddenly been told it's been given something that it's not being given. And the demand increases for that substance. So your body will want sugar after it's had the taste of sugar. You actually, there's one study that even showed there was an insulin response to a sweetener, even though it had no sugar in it, just because the body expected sugar. So this machine's clever and stupid sometimes. Um, it didn't, you know, when we were invented, there were no sweeteners. So, I mean, it's caught us out. But so, yes, try and get rid of the sweeteners. We want to drink the stuff with no sugar, no milk. If you're really going to, I'd rather you put a half teaspoon of brown sugar into your tea or some lemon than a sweetener. But try to get used to it without. You can do it.
that's pretty much that, ladies and gentlemen.